Hello. Beep, 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 beep. Welcome to the Court of the Digester. How are we, good people? Um, become a warrior teacher in May. Uh, so please do sign up. Go and see it's pinned to my tweet profile, whatever you want to call it. Please do come and join us. We need more numbers. This is very important because the fight is going to intensify now like you wouldn't believe. People are going, oh, it's over. It's not over. We've got 10 or 20 years to, to turn this culture around. You can change the law, but the culture don't change. Don't believe me? Think about what happened to gay men. Changed the law in 1967. How long did it take till we were accepted and got full, full, full coverage under the law? 2000. So don't think this is over. It's not over. All right. OK, so we've got lots to do. Come and join the Warrior Teachers. Buy me a coffee, support me, just rights, blah, all the usual. Here's a good one, and from the marvellous Gareth Roberts, who some of you may know. The link, of course, for you to read this is in the Dubris. OK, so you can go to it. And it's about Kirsty Allflop. Uh, Allsop, right? Krusty Allsop. No, Krusty Allflop. Kirsty Allsop. We all know people. I can't believe what she's been tweeted. Have you seen it? It's just... Come on, Kirsty, have a chat with me, for God's sake. I followed you so you can follow me. Drop me a message and I will talk to you privately and nobody will ever know. There you go. OK, and maybe we can bring you up to speed so that you don't look like you look currently. Which is foolish, to say the least. We all know people... <laughs> that is so funny. We all know people who are totally unaware of the complexities of a situation, says Gareth. But who are still totally confident in opening their big gob to pronounce on it. It's staggering enough when you encounter them in real life. On social media, when such a person is a celebrity, it knocks you even further backwards. For much of the past week, I've been watching with a mixture of amusement and horror at the Twitter travails of TV presenter Kirsty Oplop, Olsop, who has now entered the trans debate. Go on, Kirsty, well done. Go on. Come on, come on. And come in like you have done, completely unarmed and with no armour. Good luck. <laughs> You've wandered into it. Like, do you remember War of the Worlds where the guy thought the aliens wouldn't hurt him as long as he was godly? And he went dressed in his priestly robes, went to the Martians. Hello. And they went, right, laser him. <laughs> That's Kirsty also. <laughs> bum, bum, bum. <laughs> How you doing, Kirst? The chances of anything. <laughs> <clears throat> Right, the amiable host of Channel 4's Location, Location, Location first piped up to defend American performance artist and TikTok influencer Dylan Mulvaneyob, right? Mulvaney has documented every day of his imaginary transformation to the female sex. He has been rewarded handsomely for this. With corporate sponsorship and a toe-curling audience with the current octogenarian occupant of the White House, which was like a live-action remake of Mr. Magoo, meets olive oil. <laughs> Gareth is brilliant. After US Conservatives started to boycott Bud Light, following its partnership with Mulvaney, upped piped all plop, sop, all sop, to ask what all the fuss was about. Yeah. What was that a corner the other day? Shut up, you falsity gibbon. <laughs> Up popped all sop to ask what all the fuss was about. She said of his TikTok, childish perhaps, a bit silly, arguably, but they don't threaten me or any woman I know. Now there's somebody who don't get it, isn't that right, Kirsty? There are issues to debate, but Dylan isn't the problem, and targeting her, her, is bullying. It's him, Kirsty, you nut job. Now I'm aware of a feeding into the cliche of the privately educated loudmouth. Really? <laughs> Lest we forget, Kirsty is an actual honourable owing to her father's peerage, but sometimes one is forced to remember that stereotypes become stereotypes for a reason. While Angela Brazil-style Brazil, Brazil, Angela Brazil style pluck, say, volunteering to do a trumpet solo when you can't play the trumpet can be admirable in some contexts, hotly contested political issues are probably not the best place to go in gangbusters waving your hockey stick. <laughs> oh, Gareth, I love you. <laughs> to say that we should laugh off Mulvaney is pretty much like expecting black people to accept that a white person covered in boot polish is merely childish and a bit silly. But that was only the start. Over the days that followed, Kirsty dropped a series of ever bigger, even more staggeringly un uninformed clangers. Using prefer preferred pronouns is simply good manners, said Rip Van Also. <laughs> Said Rip Van Olsop, just waking up from 2012. When Olympic athlete and tireless campaigner for women's sports Sharon Davis had a polite word, Kirsty demanded of her, who is telling children they can change biological sex? 
Where has she been? Says Gareth. And I'm with you, Gareth. Where you been? Krusty will flop. Right. Hilariously, Kirsty's Twitter bio contains a quote about nuance. <laughs> this is passive aggressive for code for I understand everything in all its complexity. One of the things that, lean, that you learn on Twitter, she said last week, is that some people like life to be simple with a series of little boxes that they can put people in with clear labels. Perhaps they were the people who struggled with Venn diagrams at school, but humans don't stick to the recipe. Absolutely insane. I agree, Kirsty, says Gareth. It is a nuanced world. There are indeed nuanced issues like Northern Ireland or assisted dying. But is trans really one of them? There's the nuance of men cheating in women's sport, the nuance of mutilating and sterilising kids who don't act like normal boys and girls. Normal in speech marks, quote marks. It's also misty and morally complex. Should we pump a child full of experimental drugs because they've picked up something off the internet and everybody else is doing it? And Indy goes, sorry, Jay goes, mum, let her, sorry, him, do it. And we're all quandary there. Quite the puzzler. So many shades of grey. <laughs> really going to have to take time to ponder that one. It looks like a massive display of class status, Kirsty. Is the good Karen here set to set all to set all you slow coaches with your labels and boxes right. She cannot be wrong. When she finds herself in a tight spot in an argument, she reacts by sneering at the little blinkered people who could never hope to understand things in the way that she does. It's just brilliant. Gareth Roberts writes beautifully. He's taking the time to write it. Please do take the time to go and read the rest of it. It's very well worth reading. But Kirsty Olsop reminds me of that other woman that's caused all this bloody trouble who had her knapsack. Or not like a privilege. What was her name? It'll come to me in a sec. Bear with me. I don't want to have to stop. Uh, it was Peggy McIntosh, who was an insane white, shabby, quaffing, four by four driving, pony riding, hockey stick, puck hitting <laughs> lunatic who, who confused class with race. And that started after this because she's part of the intersectional critical race. How's your father? Mad lot. Right. Her name was Peggy, Peggy McIntosh. So what actually Kirsty Allsop's doing is she's doing a Peggy McIntosh. <laughs> Go and have a look. Her essay about the knapsack is hilarious. And yet, you know, whole academic theories have been written off the back of that crap, written by a socialite, right? Who sort of awakened in the morning like someone out of a, a movie 90, uh, circa 1945 with the housekeeper opening the curtains. Good morning, my lady. It's that Downton Abbey for the American rich. <laughs> Go and have a look. But Allsop's not, not, not the only problem. We've seen more of them. There was one, I can't remember what her name was, might have been Kimberly or something like that, was on talk TV or be, and just didn't get it. No, but we must say that trans women, I mean, just didn't get it. The joy of all this is we can now see who the enemy are. And they are the enemy, right? Don't give me the nicey, nicey respect me, shite, because I'm having none of it. They are the enemy, right? We can now see them. They are homophobic to the core. Now we know that what this has been is conversion therapy for gay people. That's what trans is, conversion therapy for gay people. And now we know it, we ain't letting you off the hook. All right? Goodbye. Let's keep fighting. Thank you, Gareth, for a marvellous, marvellous article. Have fun, everyone.